from your perspective are you finding that this kind of tech driven economic world that we're living in where tech is really the economic engine for many nations are you seeing this kind of divergence now happening and if so are you would you say you'd be worried about the kind of inequality levels we are seeing across the world now yeah a few years ago just before covid i went to the jaipur literary festival and um gave a, a talk about one of my books but i was also a sort of a support act um on a big stage with uh, thomas piketty of the author of capital <laughs> who was uh you know pushing his book and of course his book was you know of massive interest to the audience there was an absolutely kind of packed group and so the, there was Piketty out front talking and there was a sort of you know modest uh cast of two or three people myself my friend Arvind Subramanian who was i think working for the Indian government then as maybe the chief economist he was uh, and, and some other yeah. so in any event so there we were and uh of course Piketty's central claim uh in his book was that there was sort of this ineluctable process whereby capital was increasing its uh share of the total pie and um workers were losing share. labor was not correct yeah um and he produced some sort of you know quasi science around this and said you know the rate of growth uh, would always be exceeded by the uh growth in the stock of capital and it turned out to be nonsense i mean it, there just isn't a there 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 is no iron law about the way that um when you combine all the factors of production which you referred to you know labor land capital ideas um who gets what is not predetermined and it goes through cycles and sometimes the political economy around you know a particular set of ideas and capital stock and what have you favors the workers and other times it doesn't sometimes it favors diminishing inequality across countries or between countries and other times it's the opposite uh, and so i think the first thing to say is that be skeptical of people who say there is an ineluctable trend because there isn't recently uh in the united states um the data is showing that in country inequality is radically diminishing right it increased in almost a straight line from the late 70s to just before covid since about 2019 it's come back down again right so these things can be reversed and um you know it's complicated you can measure inequality in lots of different ways i think it matters for sure i think that the fabric of democracy cannot withstand excessive inequality Uh, but i wouldn't be deterministic about which way that's going what are some examples where i, I think we can cite various examples where capital has been rewarded amply um maybe more than labor tell us about maybe some examples that come to mind where labor has been rewarded um uh, either disproportionately more than the owners of capital Well I mean one should be careful about what we mean by disproportionate I mean in some you know in some individuals fairness compass or you know sort of moral compass maybe you'd want the workers to be paid you know almost equal to the capitalists and so way but but just I would observe that you know in the 1950s in America 1960s in America you had a period when um there was a relatively unionized workforce with a uh, preponderance of large industrial firms big car companies and so forth which were unionized and um the unions had quite a lot of power in wage bargaining there was protectionism so foreign car- cars were not a factor in the market so american capital could afford to give big pay rises to labor uh, because they were not facing japanese competitors who would eat their lunch but you know that wasn't sustainable whether that was too much for the workers or not i'm not going to say but what i would say is that once you take away protectionist barriers and the japanese auto industry really took off then they just were producing far more profits and had profits to recycle into better uh, capital investments and the japanese car makers were better uh because you know compensation for well, not just because of this but partly because 
uh, compensation for American auto workers are probably overshot. Absolutely.